and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Golgari Graveyard in Historic. This deck should be pretty fun. So I put this together because, um, you know, basically wanted to try out some stuff. And this is definitely a brew that it may not work too well, but maybe it'll be awesome. We don't know. That's what we're going to do. We're going to try it out. Um, because of that, uh, there's only two different ways to play the deck. We can either play best of one ranked or, or sorry, best of three ranked or best of one. I have like the sideboard with the deck and everything. Um, and, and you know, like in the deck list, I'm going to have the sideboard and everything. But I think because we're just, just giving this a try, we're going to just try this in unranked best of one um, and kind of see how the synergies work and everything like that uh, first. So that's what we're going to be doing for today. All right, so this is the goal of the deck. So our goal of the deck is to self-mill. So we're trying to mill ourselves. The easiest way to do that is Stitcher Supplier. Um, of course, another way to do that is Glow Spore Shaman. So we're using these two cards to mill ourselves. Um, now, Stitcher Supplier seems works really well with Witch's Oven because you want your Stitcher Supplier to die, so you mill another three cards. So you, your Supplier enters, you mill three cards, you sacrifice it to the Witch's Oven, and... Um, and that's that's another creature dying, so that's another card in your graveyard. And then you also mill three more cards. So you basically get seven cards into your graveyard if you include the Stitcher Supplier there. Um, for milling ourselves, uh, I guess also the other way, of course, Glow Spore Shaman mills three. Um, so our payoffs for milling ourselves are, of course, we can mill over Cauldron Familiars that we can bring back with Witch's Oven. But if we mill over Witch's Ovens, we can't bring them back. Right, like we can with Cauldron Familiars. And we're going to want a lot of Witches Ovens because we're, we're trying to get just a whole bunch of Witches Ovens and Cauldron Familiars and do that thing. And so that's why we're playing Nature Spirals so we can return target permanent from your graveyard to your hand. So we can pay... So it's just two mana. So it's it's kind of like Find Finality, but Find gets you two creatures. This gets you any one permanent. So we can grab Witches Oven from our graveyard um, also if we mill it over. Okay, now the other... Um, the other... Uh, Payoff, or right, well, let's talk about Fauna Shaman. So then, so the other thing I want to do was was to play Fauna Shaman in this, and um, Fauna Shaman can help you find Stitcher suppliers and Glowspore Shaman. So you you know you can find your tools to um, to mill yourself. You know, so if you don't have Stitcher supplier in hand, if you have Fauna Shaman, you can activate because it, it only costs one green mana to activate. You can discard any creature and search your library for a creature, reveal it, put it into your hand. So, you know, we can discard, call, like, discarding Cauldron's Familiar is awesome, because we just bring it back with the food that we get for sacrificing the Stitcher Supplier, right? So we we discard Cauldron Familiar, we go find Stitcher Supplier, play it, mill over some more, sack the Supplier to the Witch's Oven, and then we just bring our Cauldron Familiar back anyway. So, you know, like, that's, so that's pretty awesome. Um, but then also, I'm playing Deathless Knight here. This is a huge payoff too. So you can we can discard Deathless Knight to Fauna Shaman to put any other creature into our our hand, and Deathless Knight all you have to do is just gain life. And Deathless Knight you could get to just return it from your graveyard to your hand. You don't have to spend any mana. Um, so all you have to do is gain life. And obviously we have ways to gain life with Cauldron Familiar, Witches Oven, Gilded Goose with the food. Um, so you know we can just like Fauna Shaman Deathless Knight is just an awesome combo. Um, you know just discard Deathless Knight, go grab whatever you want. Um, you know, like a cauldron familiar or whatever, and then, uh, you know, just gain life. It goes back to your hand. Discard it the next turn, gain life, you know, put it back into your hand. Um, so this is just an awesome combo that I wanted to try to just try to um, focus on uh, really taking advantage of. Um, up next, we have, of course, Mulder Hulk. So, like, this is another payoff for milling. And, and of course, we can self-mill over Deathless Knights with, like, the suppliers and gain life and just put all the Deathless Knights back into our hand. So, like, that's a cool combo. Another payoff for milling, of course, is Mulder Hulk. Um, you know, it costs one less to cast for each creature in our graveyard. <clears throat> so, you know, we can be discarding other creatures like Deathless Knight and go grabbing Mulder Hulks and putting Mulder Hulks into play. Mulder Hulks, of course, return land from the graveyard to the battlefield, not even tapped. So, you know, we can kind of use our Mulder Hulks to ramp and everything and get out a bunch of 6-6s. Six um, and obviously, we're going to be doing the four Memorial to Folly, the Folly Mulder Hulk combo. So even when our Mulder Hulks die, we, we put, them back into our, uh, put them back into our hand with Memorial to Folly and then replay them. And so we have that combo. So that's kind of what our deck's all about. Then we have two spicy one-ofs because we have Fauna Shamans. Um, <clears throat> and the ability to put both of these back into our hand with either Nature Spiral or Memorial to Folly if we mill them over. So our spicy one-ofs is we're going to have... A, uh, well, I guess we got three of them. We got Midnight Reaper, which is obviously a great combo with Witches of and Cauldron Familiar. Um, but besides that, we have World Shaper, 
Um, if it attacks, we can put the top three cards of our library into our graveyard. We're probably not attacking with this. Um, we're, we're probably just not going to be attacking with this. But it's all about when it dies, you put all land cards from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. So if we are milling over a bunch of stuff and we mill over a bunch of lands, then um, we can play this world shaper. If we can have it die, we can just put all of those lands, put them back onto the battlefield, and we can just have a ton of mana. Now, it's not easy to have World Shaper die, and that's, that's why World Shaper didn't really see a whole lot of play before. But, of course, with Throne of Eldraine, we now have Witch's Oven. We can sacrifice our World Shaper. We can, you know, make it die very easily. So this is basically, um, if we have Witch's Oven in play, this is just four mana. Put all of your lands from your graveyard into play. And that's something that we can tutor up with Fauna Shaman or go grab from our graveyard with Nature Spiral or Memorial of the Folly. So that sounds awesome. Just a, a cool way to be able to ramp a whole bunch. Um, yeah, so we, we do have the one castle locked Twain in here also. Uh, but then, and then of course, our last one, the one of, is of course Lotless Giant. Whenever it enters, it deals one damage to the opponent for each creature in your graveyard. So that's kind of how we're going to be killing our opponent is machine gun style with Cauldron Familiars and with Lotless Giant, uh, just burning them out with their... Uh, with with those so like even if they're like a uh, field of the dead deck if they get a bunch of zombies we can you know go over the top of them with this and of course um you know especially if we have a lot of mana we can um you know play lotless giant we can sacrifice the lotless giant to witch's oven bring it back with memorial to folly or nature spiral play it again you know so we can um so you know like it's okay just to have one of them because we can play it multiple times if we need it because we can just sacrifice it to witch's oven and, and bring it back uh yeah golgari raiders definitely definitely consider that um i kind of just kind of ran out of room <laughs> basically but yeah golgari raiders would be pretty good i mean this is basically our golgari raiders it's smaller but it just keeps on returning but of course you know it's a four four mana haste creature um against golgari queen yeah golgari queen can also be good the thing is we just we just don't have room for everything um you know that's that's kind of the problem i wanted to play a lot more cards i wanted to play gutter bones you know, like, I thought Gutter Bones would be a great card to discard to Fauna Shaman, mill over, be able to put back into our hand. So I wanted to play Gutter Bones. Um, you know, obviously, I wanted the fourth Glow Spore Shaman. I wanted a lot more than one Midnight Reaper, because I think Midnight Reaper could be really clutch. So I wanted I wanted more than one Midnight Reaper, for sure. I definitely thought about the Explore package also, um, but that just took up too many slots. You know, we just can't fit everything in, but, um, but yeah, Golgari Queen is probably awesome here too um so yeah i'm not i'm not sure exactly how good this deck's going to be but it, it seems like we have you know i basically we have a ton of synergies in here and this could be a lot of fun um as far as like the cards i chose for the sideboard this is obviously very rough um Kral foragers is, is definitely a necessary card against the red decks gain a lot of life we may need more than two Kral foragers it's possible that maybe i'm not going to be good enough against red decks i'm going to be too slow um, but hopefully cauldron familiar which is oven does some good stuff against them but that's why that's in here. Masker Girl against just like, I don't know, against like other creature decks. Because we have like 1-1s one that we can uh, get the Masker Girl started. Um, obviously, just having creatures that you get to tutor for is valuable as well. Chupacabras for some removal for creatures. I think Oko, I mean, Oko could definitely just be a problem. Oko turning Witch's Ovens into 3-3s three and everything. And I'm not really killing Planeswalkers. So that's why I was going to play four Noxious Grass for the Oko decks. Four Ashioks, of course, for Kethis combo and... Uh, Field of the Dead, and then just you know a couple duresses to kind of have in there to round it out. That's this is obviously just a very rough sideboard right now. Um, uh, no, no, no. We I would I would play like six or seven Fauna Shamans if I could. I've never no, I'm not cutting a Fauna Shaman. No, that's that. No, not cutting that card. Like that's Fauna Shaman is is what this card is what is what this deck is built around. All right, so like I said, our our only options for best of three are the ranked. But since we're we're really just trying this deck out, we're gonna go ahead and try it over in. Um, we're just gonna be playing some best of one to start with, even though this. Yeah, we just want to see see how these cards interact and everything. Get a good sense of the deck. No, no, Lana War Elves. I'm playing Gilded Goose because of uh, wanting the food, but no, no Land of Werewolf. Um, 
I have 23 land in the deck. We don't have a, so we don't have a lot of lands. If we mill over, let's let's keep it. We're on the draw. Our opponent's on six. So if we just hit three creatures, this would still cost six mana. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's good. Nature Spiral's good. Mm. Those are not really that good of cards to see, though. <clears throat> Would have liked to mill over a Witch's Oven. Thanks, Storm. Boo. All right, we want to find Witch's Oven or Fauna Shaman? Yeah, Fauna Shaman. That's big. All right, so we got a lot of lands in the graveyard. Four, five, six, seven, eight... Perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's... Let's see, let's... Discard Molder Hulk. Go grab... Like, I, I may want to just start, you know, Deathless Knight chaining. Could grab another Fauna Shaman. It may not be bad to grab another Fauna Shaman. We do have a good amount of lands in the graveyard that I could World Shaper, but probably don't need to yet. We could just do some more self-mill with another supplier. Let's do that. Let's get some more self-mill. Hey, what's up, Toasted? Yeah, it looks like our opponent's going your rock field. So we're going to be trying to go over the top with our pings. No Deathless Knight yet to pick up. Wouldn't mind a second Witch's Oven, though, either. I don't know. So thinking about, let's see. Let's cancel. Let's do. Let's do this. <clears throat> I kind of want that. So I'm grabbing the castle. I, I kind of want. So I'm gonna. I'm planning on activating Memorial of Folly. I think I want to just grab Midnight Reaper, so I can start drawing a lot more cards. Need to hit a, a Deathless Knight. We we didn't we didn't hit a Deathless Knight though. But if we hit a Deathless Knight, you know, we would have been able to pick up the Deathless Knight, and that would have been a lot better for us. No, I have Chupacabra in the sideboard. So yeah, we're going to be taking five a turn from this thing, but that, that's fine. I'm not too worried about that thing yet. Uh, 
Um... But yeah, I guess I didn't really plan on having anything for a... For a 5-5 five five flyer. Do I grab Midnight Reaper or Stitcher Supplier? I want to save... on a creature there we go let's go perfect unfortunately I can't pick that card back up yet because I already gained life this turn no I mean we just have to race flyers. We should be able to be gaining a lot of life and stuff like that. Just gotta race them. I need more witches' ovens. Well, that's rude. Ovens, where are you at? No, there's no more ovens. Yeah, I have Masker Girl on the sideboard also. Yeah, Masker Girl. You know, yeah, I have that Chupacabra on the sideboard. So that's why I'm I'm basically getting these these mill things to you know mill more cards to look for more witches ovens. You know, basically making it like. Like their draw threes, but we're just not finding them. Obviously, this is not great for us. What my opponent's doing. Well, I didn't. I didn't really design this deck for best of one. I just don't have options to. To it's either play this in high ranking mythic when we're just testing out a new brew that's our only option for best of three or played in best of one so yeah I'm changing the deck to, you know you, we could definitely change the deck for specifically for best of one Yeah, I don't have the mana to play Lotless Giant right now. So 
So I need to ramp, but I also need to find witches ovens. I need to do both of those things. I can't really do both. Which is a problem. Still no ovens. I only saw one oven in the first 40 cards. My opponent took it. Yeah, they just get back finale back. All right, whatever. I mean, it was definitely the just you know multiple agent of treacheries there with your rock the. While the while the five five flyer was annoying, it wouldn't like we were going to be able to be just fine against the five five flyer with our one oven that we had, you know, sacking like the other Stitcher suppliers and stuff. It was obviously the agent of treacheries that that killed me. This hand's not very good either, but we'll see. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem, Wayward Wanderer. Yep, doing a Thanksgiving stream tomorrow. It's going to be earlier, though. We're doing an earlier stream tomorrow. So ho hopefully y'all still join. Um, yeah, so starting at noon Eastern. Which is like five and a half hours ago today. The one card that I do not want to mill over is Nature Spiral. And unfortunately, when we milled over three, that we milled over those two. That's that's honestly just the one card of my that's the worst card of my deck to mill over. Because that's that's a card that does nothing in the graveyard. No, I'm no, I'm not a teacher anymore. Uh, just do all all streaming all the time. No, the dragon doesn't change any colors. No, we no, we didn't win the last game. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm te teaching magic now. 
Good point, good point. All right, so we're following back the Glowspore Shaman to self-mill some more. Ooh, oven's a good one. And got some lands over here. What, some Molder Hulk costs five right now. We can make it cost four by sacking Cauldron Familiar. Or, of course, by blocking with the Glow Spore Shaman. It does feel like we need some Chupacabras. Yeah, just basically decks that I make fluky and what I kind of what I feel like playing kind of thing and um, yeah, just decks that that I want to play basically. That's how the decks are decided upon. If I'm you know really interested in, in making any specific type of deck like this one. I do wish I had like a masker girl in here. Yeah, Unbreakable Formation only gives you counters if you cast it during your main phase. You don't get counters with Unbreakable Formation during upkeep. But you can see why, why us drawing as many Witches Ovens as possible is... Uh, really valuable because because of how we we mill we're gonna find a lot more cauldron familiars So we, we really want to draw as many witches ovens as we can Which is why we don't want to mill over natural Nature spiral because that can find us more witches ovens You'd rather have three ovens than three cats if you could choose one or the other Um, I think Chupacabra would be would be better than Wicked Wolf, even though we're a food deck. I, I think that it's just always going to kill the creature, and you don't have to sack the food suit. I think that's more valuable. Uh, what's my opinion on it? Mnemonic Betrayal? It is a cool card. It's pretty hard to um, make work, because, you know, your opponent's deck has to... Um, has to help you out and it of course costs a whole lot of mana it's like you, know, you have to spend three mana just to start playing spells and so like if you just play like a two mana spell you just spent five mana for your two mana spells you need just a ton of mana to really make it worth it wow just no attacks
Yay, which seven? Oh, that thing costs three mana? That thing costs two. I guess it, count it costs two because it counted itself in the graveyard. Oh well, I guess we'll have to play that next turn. Opponent's got to be a little careful over here. Losing this this life for drawing cards. They're at a lower life total than than what they probably realize. Well, maybe. I guess I can't really say what they realize. Yeah, Green Cavalier, Sir Conrad. Yeah, this could definitely be something. That's the thing. It's There's so many cards that you could play in a deck like this. So you just don't have room for everything. I don't like this. I liked it more whenever they weren't attacking. That was a lot better for me. All these things have death touch also because of Death Baron. All right, so they're going to have this one. Need to mulligan more aggressively. The hand I kept was too slow. You know, it's just being, you know, multiple Molder Hulks in my hand. It was too slow. I need to mulligan.
Well, the other thing, yeah, sacrificing Mulder Hulk would have got us two food, but it wouldn't have killed their 4 3. Their 4 3 was killing me, and you know, I liked getting that 4 3 out, out of there, but. So, yeah, maybe the one World Shaper is too cute, and maybe we need a, a one Masker Girl, or maybe we could fit that in. All right, so this is a better hand. This is not a hand with a bunch of lands and Mulder Hulks this time. It's not Clarion here. Just as bad. Maybe we should have just grabbed a second Fauna Shaman instead of that Gilded Goose. Thank goodness not Clarion. Alright, so obviously that's just like completely devastating. Yeah, obviously that is just completely devastating. Still damage deals that much damage to target to player. Target yourself. So yeah, Ixalan's binding. I, I can't cast this other oven. You know, it's, it's such a vital part of my deck. I don't have any disenchants or anything for that Ixalan's binding. That was good. Three Deathless Knights back. Go get him, Deathless Knight. Get him. I 
And we just ramped a bunch. World Shaper got us. What? Four lands there? Three lands? Three lands? Hmm. I could also just not block. And try to attack back with it. I don't even have a swamp. Go get him, knights. Darn. No, I did not. I should not have muted my mic as, as much as I know. Scoutski with $10. Thanks for the very enjoyed it. In, uh, thanks for the very informative streams. Really enjoy your content. Thank you, Scoutski. That was really nice. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to bring back the goose. We can have food again. It's so rude. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, what am I supposed to do about Star of Extinction? I can't. I mean, yeah, they could, they could have Star of Extinction, but I can't do anything about it. Yeah, I think I'd rather play Reclamation Sage. I think than Brontodon in this deck. So I think that's game, right? I guess I shouldn't have made this attack. Yeah, I just killed myself by making that attack. I needed to get back Gilded Goose. I just killed myself by making that attack. That was just a... Alright, that was a bad attack. That was just me making a very poor attack. That was me not thinking and just attacking. Well, thank you so much, Skatsky. Yeah, I, yeah, I got the time. Thanks, Necrolepsy. Sure, yeah, we're 0-3. This, this league isn't really about wins and losses. This is about learning... Um, what, what our deck can do, what it's, you know, like, what is it, um, 
you know, what is, what's its weaknesses? Where can we sh shore up? What cards are underperforming that we can uh, trim or cut? I honestly don't don't mind one bit that we're zero and three. That's that's not really what what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to like win every single game here. This is about learning. Nope, not you. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure about Cavalier Thorns. It's pretty expensive. I don't really want five drops, honestly. Like, this thing's really expensive, but hopefully it doesn't actually cost as much as it says it does. But I, I don't really want five mana cards, but... And Cavalier Thorns isn't... also just isn't as good in this metagame with, you know, with Oko. You know, Oko is here in Historic, and so it's not as good as it is in Standard right now. Yeah. What makes Oko such a strong card? Turning any creature into a 3-3 three, three and getting rid of all of its abilities and just making it into a 3-3 three, three, um, turn after turn is, um, is much beyond what a 3-mana card should reasonably do. All right, so we got the infinite Molder Hulk combo online. We sack our folly, bring it back, play Molder Hulk, bring back the folly. It's a six mana combo, but you get infinite Molder Hulks. Yeah, Golgari Raiders. I don't, I don't really have room for Golgari Raiders with. Um, with playing all the Deathless Knights, though, I don't think. Gol Golgari Raiders, of course, can attack for more, but I just really like Deathless Knight's ability to keep coming back and to recur. So it feels like we need we need a little bit of interaction, like like one masker girl. And we could use some more Midnight Reapers. Get some more card draw. How can we fit in those cards though? Survival is your favorite card of all time. Awesome. Yeah, this is a basically a survival deck. Yeah, it could be better in best of three with yeah, getting a getting yeah, having your cyborg toolbox for Fauna Shaman. For sure. Um, of course at best of three you do have to worry about like people the I guess the one problem with this deck is best of three people are probably playing a whole lot of um, Ashiox because of Kethis and um, and Field of the Dead. And I guess Ashiok is really good against this deck. There's there's just not room for Creeping Chill. It's a that's an awesome card to surveil over. But we just don't have room.
Witch's Oven. That's the card we need, Witch's Oven right there. Yeah, this looks like Kethis from our opponent. Which we're probably going to be too slow for, but that's okay. Obviously, Loaming Shaman's another one in our uh, deck that we could have in our sideboard for this kind of matchup to make them shuffle. Cardio with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Cardio. Welcome to the channel. Okay. So I want to... We need to keep filling our graveyard really fast and look for Lotlith Giants to kill our opponent. I think I think they're going to beat us though. They look pretty well set up. There's Lot with Giant. I got one Deathless Knight in there right now. So that's probably a good sign for me, but maybe not. I basically need two more turns. I need one more turn to put the Lawless Giant back into my hand and then another turn to cast it. But I don't think we get two more turns. Let me. 
No, we definitely don't get two more turns. Yeah, this game's over. Just wish I had more room for more stuff. Play like a masker girl and two chupacabras. Hey, what's up, Reptar? Thank you so much, there, Reptar. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Opsius. Yeah, that was yeah. Green White Company, definitely my deck there for sure. The spiral is awesome. The spiral is awesome because spiral puts witches oven back into our hand, and that's witches oven is, you know, we we want to have like two, three, four witches ovens in play. Like that's really like where our deck can go crazy. Um, yeah, Molder Hulk's looking a little slow. Like maybe we don't need four of them. Uh, like having four Molder Hulks hasn't seemed like we need four. Um, Glow Spore Shaman. Yeah, it may end up that maybe that we just move away from Molder Hulk. We have the suppliers to mill. Maybe we don't need the Glow Spore Shamans also. I want more Midnight Reapers, though. We just have one Choop, one Choop, one Masker Girl. Because, yeah, I think we probably just need more one-ofs, don't we? Just so we can find, like, our interaction pieces. Yeah, I think Chupa's better than, than the wolf with the food around. Uh, it just destroys everything as you want it to. Yeah, I think Izoni is too slow. I mean, I think you could play Izoni if you play a Yara. Definitely consider playing a Yara in this kind of deck, too. Um, the Molder Hulk would, would help with a Yara, though, getting you more black sources. But yeah, a Yara plus Izoni is like another combo. So many things to be doing. Let's try this. Let's just try some more one ofs. Trim a couple of these Molder Hulks that haven't looked so good. Let's see how this goes. I mean, Wolf is great against small creatures, but Chupacabra is good against everything. You know, Chupacabra kills Big Krasis. We really need all. Like, if you've been watching these games, we haven't really had enough food tokens. It's not like. You know, like, we're not like having Oko that makes a ton of food tokens for us. We don't really have like a. An abundance of food tokens to sacrifice to wolf. We have more. We have more cats than normal with this deck because of how we mill over the cats in the graveyard. We're not having enough food to go with the cats. So if we can't even feed the cats, how are we supposed to feed wolves also? Hey, welcome back, Storm.
Getting on the action. So I put the land back on top so the land would be one of their choices with Thieva Sanity. I didn't really care to draw the land. I mean, it would have been fine, but. All right, so they had land, Molder Hulk, and something else. Kind of need one more mana, though, to be able to go grab Chupacabra than play Chupacabra. I could also I could just play Death Deathless Knight and just swing at them. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's attacking for 11. Like that's basically killing them. I'm just going to do that. Other option would be to discard Deathless Knight and go grab Midnight Reaper and put Midnight Reaper into play. Hey, what's up, Gar? Got to Mythic for the first time with the Gruul Historic deck. That is awesome. Way to go. Good job, Gar. Way to go. That's really exciting, getting to Mythic. <laughs> yeah, the thief is just helping helping get stuff in the graveyard. No, they killed the right one. Another Deathless Knight. These Deathless Knights have looked really good against interactive heavy decks, being able to keep putting them back into my hand. No, Exile. No. My World Shaper. No, <laughs> Witch's Oven. I need that one. Ugh. That was a bad turn for me. That was a pretty bad turn for me. Why didn't I block with the World Shaper? Because I wanted I wanted to mill. I was getting greedy. I wanted to mill over more. I only have three lands in my graveyard anyway right now. But I wanted to get this. I wanted the supplier to die first. I guess the supplier would have died as well though. Yeah, giant giant costs seven mana though. I only have I only have six. Um, Giant would do 11 damage. So I guess that's why they blocked. Alright, well, now we have less mana. Wait. I don't have... They exiled my goose. I was going to go grab a goose. Hmm. I guess I'll just wait a turn. <laughs> they they stole my oven with the Thief of Sanity. They're they're obviously not playing their own oven in their deck.
Hmm. Oh yeah, I could I should have just grabbed Mulder Hulk, shouldn't I? We'll just do that here. Yeah, I should've just grabbed Molder Hulk last turn. Should've just done that last turn with the six mana. It was just free. Ooh. That's bold. Mill over some more creatures. Make my lot with giant even bigger. No, two lands. Ah, land nature spiral. No, they're taking all my witches of ovens. There's a witch's oven. Um, no, I do not have another Mulder Hulk in the grave. Yeah, those Evans need to get some more damage out here. My opponents hit pretty well getting those Witches' Evans. But hopefully now, with having this other haste attacker, it's 12 damage right now. And we're down to 13 cards in library. Should just hit some more creatures. There's one. So we got 13 now. Okay, awesome. Glad you enjoyed the Gruel Henge deck. You met Bolus and Fires. That was rough. All right, so getting blockers. Um, While well, this giant does 14, sack something, so it does 15 damage. I guess we just go to attackers first. So they can gain six. 
We can block this, gain six. I think we have this. It could have a counter spell though too. Ooh, that's a bold block. Gotta have like a counter spell, right? Hey, Sothian. That does not make it seem like they have a counter spell. 16 damage. Oh, they did have a counter spell. <clears throat> so, why'd they sack their Thief of Sanities then? Why would they sack the Thief of Sandies when the Thief of Sandies are going to, like, kill me? Uh, no, Mind Virus, they aren't. No, Drown and Lock looks at my graveyard, not my opponent's graveyard. They didn't, that, that had no, yeah, that had no bearing on them sacrificing there. We can have two Deathless Knights attacking next turn. We got eight mana. Uh -huh. Well, thanks, Mind Virus. And of course, this is going to be us gaining life, so we put the Deathless Knight back into our hand, the one in the graveyard. Let's bring this thing back, though, too. And we're just going to attack on out. They can block one, they take four, five, six, seven, eight. They're at five, they gain five plus three is eight. And this is eight damage. Thanks, Sothian. Thank you so much. Now, Drawn for Dreams cast the, the person who ever cast the spell. That's Drawn for Dreams counts that. So they could counter something that had CMC 28 or less. It counts my graveyard. Well, we're we're two and four, but one and zero after making changes. Even though we didn't really use any of the new cards too much, our decks looked good against removal heavy decks.
these Deathless Knights against the removal heavy decks been able to keep on bringing them back. This is a slower hand. Pay some, some Flood Omniscience janky combo. Okay. Impassioned Orator. So what am I going to go grab? I mean, I need Witch's Oven. That's what I need. Unfortunately, you can't go search for Witch's Oven. Let's get Midnight Reaper. No, my return to nature. Or whatever that whatever that card's called. Nature Spiral. Yep, Scout, yeah, absolutely. All right, so my plan is to discard, like, we'll we'll get back Deathless Knight, we'll discard Deathless Knight, and grab something. Could grab Master Girl. Could grab Molder Hulks. Hey, Hawkeye. What are you up to, boy? Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses a life. I don't like that. I don't like losing life. That's not cool. The world shaper, the world shaper is going to ramp us though too. Could just go grab another stitcher supplier. But we do have the glow spore shaman. Let's grab supplier. All right, LB, have a good night. No, not witches oven. No, not witches oven. Ugh. I want lands. Ah, uh, and then a nature spiral. Those are the cards we need.
So I'm basically just milling myself as much as possible right now. Before I attack with this World Shaper. Alright, I don't really want to mill out though, so maybe I should attack with this Midnight Reaper too. But I'll draw an extra card. Because we're going to Mask her Girl. And wipe the board, and, and maybe I shouldn't have... <clears throat> maybe I shouldn't have Midnight Reaper in play whenever we Mask a Girl. They didn't block the World Shaper. Yay, Witch's Oven. All right, so that's our last one. All right, good night. Nugget Crisp, yeah. We're going to have two days off there. Hopefully y'all don't miss me too much. All right, well, having a Masker Girl is pretty sweet. World Shaper time. Uh, unfortunately, I can't stop the triggers from happening that way. So that's all of my... Alright, so I, I cannot get any Witch's Ovens back. That's all, all of the rest of my Witch's Ovens and Nature Spirals all got milled over. I mean, I only have 10 cards left in my library. So I guess I have to do another 22 damage here still. Ugh. Guess we gotta do that, Hawkeye. So we have 24 creatures in the graveyard for Lotleth Giant. I don't think I'd do that yet. I'm gonna get back a goose. So I wanna get back a bunch of Deathless Knights. All right, so this went pretty well. Thought I had Golgari Fine Broker. Yeah, Fine Broker. Maybe that's better than than Nature Spiral. I just like how Nature Spiral only costs two mana, but Fine Broker is a creature that does the same thing. I should probably replace one of them with a, a Fine Broker. Because, yeah, fine, fine Broker is permanent, isn't it? It is permanent. So, yeah, yeah, actually, I should have some Golgari Fine Broker, shouldn't I? I guess I kind of forgot that it was permanent. Yeah, so Sub Battle Saturday, uh, yeah, I'm just going to move it to the next week. So, yeah, we'll do Sub Battle Saturday um, next week and the end of December also. 
So yeah, we'll have we'll have two sub battle Saturdays in December since I'm missing this one here. Okay, so usually do seven of the best of ones, and yeah, that was an hour and a half there. So yeah, we'll we'll finish up there. Yeah, that's a good call. I guess I kind of forgot that that thing was permanent. I guess I was thinking that card was creature. Um. Because, yeah, we can grab it with Memorial to Folly and everything, too. We should at least have one Find Broker at the very least over a Nature Spiral. I do like how Nature Spiral is just two mana, though. But obviously, this gets you your creature. You can go grab it and everything. Go find it. Yeah, we should definitely have one of those. Okay. So there's an update. Our, our sideboard's still very crude. Um... But yeah, this this played pretty well. Like it, it definitely played better after you know after we made the changes. Definitely played better there. But again, this league, so you know, three and four respectable. This league wasn't really about wins and losses. This was about finding out um, how these cards really work together. What you know, what do we kind of struggle with? And just you know, basically with it just being best of one, just kind of really finding out about um, you know like these synergies and stuff. Um, you cut Spiral altogether. I don't think you understand how important Witch's Ovens is. Like, we need to grab the Witch's Ovens that we mill over, and that's why we have Nature Spiral. But this is basically, if you think about it, you know, like the two mana draw card cards, which there's a lot of them. This is basically like that, except for it, it has a ton of, ton of, uh, like this is, it's kind of like Demonic Tutor, if you think about it. Like it's, you know, we mill over a bunch of stuff. Like these are all permanents. You can pick out whatever permanent that you want for two mana that's in the graveyard. So it's basically Demonic Tutor. It's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, Deathless Knight was awesome. Uh, Fauna Shaman was amazing. I think Fauna Shaman was incredibly good. But like that combination of Fauna Shaman and Deathless Knight was just awesome. But then, yeah, against like those, the decks that they would kill all of our stuff, we would you know, use Cauldron Familiar or Witch's Oven, we'd gain a little bit of life, bring back a bunch of 4-2 haste. It definitely made me think that we should probably, like, we should probably be building around Deathless Knight in Standard. Maybe. We don't really mill as well in Standard. But there could be something there in Standard with people playing less Ashiox. Because, yeah, that card was awesome. I wish we had Fauna Shaman in Standard. But there we go. All right, I'll I'll update the deck list um, here for uh, Haler Thanis. I'll update the deck list um, for the YouTube channel. But again, those of y'all on YouTube, leave some comments. Let me know, um, you know, not only what you thought of the deck, but if you're trying it trying it out, or you know, have any good suggestions, good suggestions for a sideboard, anything like that. Um, but basically, this engine here of Fauna Shaman Deathless Knights really powerful. You know, we could definitely go somewhere else with it. But there's just so much cool stuff to do with Fauna Shaman. And so much so much um, area to explore here. And that's kind of what we were doing here. That's what this league was about. This is, this is all just about exploring. Not necessarily about just wins and losses here. But that's Golgari Graveyard. Um, so also for y'all on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit that like button over there. And also, I hope you check out the Patreon page. If you really like my videos and like to help support my content, uh, that's the best way to do it over on Patreon. There's a link down below, but patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG. It's just $3 a month. That's it. Um, it's uh, I, I write, I'm writing different uh, articles over there, just little short pieces. Uh, today, I wrote one called A Song of Fire and Food. I was very happy with my uh, title there. But, you know, it's basically for, you know, it's not, uh, it's for the written content over there and just supporting my videos. For, for $3 a month, it's like two and a half cents per video that I put out per month or about 50 cents an article or so. So very cheap. Hopefully y'all um, think about joining our community on Patreon. All right, but that's Golgari Graveyard. So thank you so much for watching. Say bye, Hawkeye. Yep, thanks for watching. Bye, Hawkeye. I'll see you for the next video.